Hi, my name is Kyle Masterson. I'm a data scientist. I've been working with the microbiome uh, variety of conditions, originally chronic fatigue syndrome, but eventually but it exploded quickly into a whole stack of other conditions. And this is a series of posts dealing with autism. Um, and they intended to show what we can do with it, what the site I wrote can do with it, with its artificial intelligence engines behind it, and just get people familiar with possible ways of approaching dealing with a child with autism to reduce symptoms, etc. Um, in this case, I'm going to be talking about the general case of people with autism as a whole, and we'll be talking about end products. End products are the chemicals that bacteria produces, which I will go into the body. Um, a classic example, something like glucose goes into the body and it feeds other cells in the bodies. Um, another example is, is um, sulfur dioxide, which goes in and inhibits cells or gives, gives you um, cyber or other things. So we're talking about chemicals that bacteria produce. A, one particular bacteria may often be produced by 25 or 30 or even 40 different bacteria as part of their living process. Others, only a few. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at what associations we can find between autism and end products. That is the chemicals being produced by the bacteria as best as we can approximate it from the microbiome sample which is being uploaded and from um, the available information from a variety of literature as to which bacteria produces which byproduct. That information is very incomplete. So this section is somewhere really dealing with what I could term experimental. I don't have high confidence in it because there's too many data gaps, or it feels like there's not enough data gaps, not enough studies being done of the right sort. Okay, so here we have the end product, the, the post which I um, wrote um, applies to autism parts, FM, MECFS, CYBO, you name it. And what we do is we are going to take a look at what information we have. Let's drop back all the way to the lowest level. The lowest level would be over and clicking on end products, multiplies medical explorer. And when you go there, you can select a particular sample and a particular condition. Condition here is the value or the pattern reported by medical literature and words is a high or is a low <coughs> and you know earlier polls we found that there is very poor repeat reproducibility repeatability 20 studies one particular bacteria one you know, most common is only mentioned seven times as being different so 13 people found there was no difference at all seven people found there were a difference and they disagree what the difference was. Some say autistic children are higher. Others say autistic children are lower. Okay, so that's sort of the background. Here I've done for, um, brought in the um, mother for it. And the mother value is sitting right about the 50th percentile. Let's flip over to the first child's samples. And we'll also flip that over to actual values. And as we see, the child is sitting about 62 percentile, so she is a tighter match for the medical literature on autism. And we go down and we look at the absolute last one, the result of the child has, in which case we see that her value is so low according to the literature that there's no appearance of autism. This is a problem dealing with the medical literature as to which bacteria appears in autism. Non-reproducibility results do not match um, the result. If you remember, we had gone and we had looked at 
to this particular person and with our citizen science approach every single one of her sample was sitting right here as in a very very good match now we're going to flip over and if we go and look here we can we have a whole bunch of things here we have conditions but what we have here is also end product so for example if i say okay is more glucose produced with autism and we see the value here as to how much glucose is produced so it's about 95 percentile but does that happen for all the samples we change it to a different sample and we have a less so it looks like perhaps more glucose is being produced now we have a whole bunch of different things there we have something like 150 160 different metabolites so rather than eyeballing your way through there is a already produced cross association between the variety of symptoms or conditions the that the person who uploaded entered and the official diagnosis so what we find is that we have 40 samples reporting and we have 15 different end products that appears to be associated with it just like with bacteria association we just click on it and we go and we see what bacteria end products are associated as in a whole bunch of them uh, we see a low amount a bacteria is a naturally occurring um, is the antibody being reduced by bacteria against other bacteria and you see that a whole bunch of them there's very little being produced we see other things like folic acid which is high others we have like um gba we find it's a bipolar half of them have high or actually about two thirds of them have high value and one third of them have low value which again going back to the dna variations we may have two different subsets based on their particular DNA mutations that each one has, etc. And we can actually go down and even break it down into finer resolution. And sometimes the finer resolution turns up more things, like for example, GBA, which was not yellow up above, has now become significant. And you will notice that it's very high and it's very low. So it's sort of by taking finer, finer slicing we end up getting more significant and then we go down even more and then we see whatever is happening and we'll basically see some interesting things like tryptophan very low very high in other words values goes to extremes they're not even distributed the number expected in every one of those cells would be about 2.5 and we have 12 in one and the other end of the spectrum we have 11. so that gives us the information as to the list of all of the end products that may be involved and we now want to say okay that's nice we see this but what can we do with it and what we can do with it is we can actually identify which end product this particular person happens to be high or low end but at the moment let's just do it the simple way which is we are going to go and take a look at it and for example something like tryptophan is too high or it's in the high brackets we probably don't want to supplement with it sulfate is in the low sulfate eats produce eating or encouraging foods like um dark green vegetables broccoli etc may be desired uh tri um triamine is low which is amino acid but it also is high so it almost ends up suggesting a need to do lab testing to find out what the child actual levels are because chances are they're going to be either high or low and you need to adjust appropriately so we are going to actually move on to the actual trial to see what we can discover about it. Again, 
we go on into compare samples. And down here, you will see an end project timeline. So we can click on that. And we can now take a look at how particular things vary over time. For example, let's take acetate. Acetate, we see a low amount, and it is building and building and building and building. So more and more acetate is being produced over time. Let's take another one. Let's take ammonia. That appears to be very stable over time. Um, and 75% a bit high, but it's very stable. We could, we were mentioning about missing some of the natural produced antibiotics. And we see that it was being low, low, and then suddenly recently it has taken off significantly. So something happened between November 18th and January that resulted in a lot more of that bacterial class 3 being produced. Let's see what class 2 did. And class 2 is similar. Now we can go on to our heart's content and take a look for something like CO2 production. And that be going up over time too. Uh, it's that it started earlier. And GBA. And we again see more GBA production happening, and practically none earlier on. Um, so we can go on and on, and there are a ton of things there which you can um, take a look at. Another one which was low, and then suddenly it has jumped up from being well below normal to actually um, well above normal. So those are some of the things which we can see and you can walk through them one by one. Now, that is nice, but what we want to do is know how to alter the microbiome so that the metabolites being produced will be altered, which means having to do a step back and figure out what you really want to do. So to do to that end, I actually did some more programming, which we'll hop over to in a moment. We'll go back to the sample page, and then we have the end product bacteria explorer. If we click that, we can go and see which bacteria are associated with which end product. In our case, one of the things we identified by walking through was that formic acid was high. And what we quickly see is the reason it's high is because we have high of these two bacteria. So we can go and just click that, which goes and adds it to a hand-picked taxa. And you can see we just have the two of them there. We can return to the um, end product bacteria explorer again and take a look at something else for example I believe we mentioned ammonia is going up and we find that ammonia is going up and we find that a culprit would appear to be streptococcus so we can go and do the same thing uh, we can go and add this to the collection and we can go back and look at more um, particular projects which which may be of concern. Um, leave what? Um, moment. Let's say sulfite, and these are the bacteria producing sulfite, and we don't have enough of them, so we add those in to that to try bringing up that end product. If we go over here, we will now see the variety of numbers. You can see the software which we brought in. We have only 51. 421 is where 25% starts at and goes up. So we are going to want to encourage this one. 
the upper ones are ones which are high and which you want to discourage that one and we can go back and forth looking at end products and determining which ones are concerned to us then go over find out which bacteria appears to be causing the shift in a way we don't want it and build up a profile of what we really want to do um, in this particular case we got one more which I want to add in which is oops wrong one um, just showing for example for just one oops, ah, okay that's another way of looking at the data and picking the bacteria very similar to end product and what we want to do here is one thing which I noticed was formic acid and we have those two there uh, I had already added them so I just double click them again if you forget what you have added don't worry about it because you can't double add so now we have four bacteria we could add more bacteria however you care to choose it so we go back and we now go and ask for handpicked suggestions and so suggesting a new window I'm just doing very quickly uh, we find number one choice is human milk oligosaccharide oligose which is humans equivalent to breast milk and that is number one item to take and then we have licorice real licorice not licorice flavor real licorice sitting there melatonin nac etc items to decrease inulin shows up again we've seen that earlier uh don't feed the kids any muscles the kid probably would be quite happy with it barley shows up as a avoid um and then we end up with the list of probiotics the positive impact in general, the more items are in the list, the, the, the shorter some of these lists or longer some of these lists are going to become because uh, positive impact will usually become shorter for probiotic mixture. Items to take will likely become longer, but the values will keep getting smaller and smaller as we add in more. So at this point of time, I think I want to return back to the symptom source we did much better and predicting people with autism than we did by using published medical studies. We have a probable symptom cluster here. And what that does, it looks at all of this data and attempts to find commonality. In other words, is there a particular bacteria which is recurrent, which is causing a particular symptom to keep reoccurring and reoccurring and reoccurring? Other bacteria may come in and go out, but some may hang around constantly. So what it does, it shows the most probable symptoms. And this is done by using artificial intelligence, which means sim called tuning. So if you increase the threshold to 0.7, for example, and do an update, you will find that there's less items there, 0 0.8. You, you end up with just one item. And then what below it would be the bacteria which is associated with it. And particularly you find over here, what is the impact of that bacteria? Is this particularly high? As in, in this particular case, we have 12 samples and, and all 12 samples has this particular bacteria being used to identify autism as being probable. So all of these are your regular reoccurring play of the game SAM. And then we have other bacteria which are don't always show up. They show up for a while and disappear. A couple of these are species, and species tend to come in and out quite a bit. Um, so what we have is we basically have what bacteria tends to be most associated with 
this particular symptom. Again, if you reduce the level to the 6.5, we end up with a far bigger list of things. And down below, we have more items. The impact here is the number of items here times the number of samples that we have a matchup on. So you will get different results, and there's no real right answer. And I'm going to put it back up to 0.62. And we have memory, concentration, and sleep as being there. And now we have what tends to be recurrent. We have free here. And free means that we would expect to see 36. It applies for everything. And in this particular case, I suspect the first items are all associated with the sleep, etc., and not with autism. And then we hit down with ones which are associated with autism. And in fact, what we have right here is a very thin break. All of these are associated with the DePaul University symptoms as being significant. All of these are, are connected with autism as being significant two distinctive bundles, two different sets of bacteria which are associated. So we can proceed to add that in if we want. And again, we can go in and just add away. I'm going to go all the way down to everything that I managed to, to get a 12 hit on, a couple more just for the fun of it. And now I add that to our custom down here and it doesn't show up here it actually shows up up here and what it does it looks at all of the samples and the one which is the closest match for what ends up being selected is used to grab numbers from and so we can go up here and we can go back and we can again ask for handpick suggestions, select what we want, and view suggestions. And see what appears here. Triphala, which has occurred before. Um, licorice is suddenly on a decrease. It's probably impacts the DePaul University bacteria, but negatively, I am, but it does impact the autism bacteria positively. It's the site, how to say, dilemma as to which fire, which symptom or which conditions are you want to focus on. Often what helps one hurts the other and it's trying to walk a path between all of this. Okay, I'm going to shut up and tell you go to the site, explore, have a good time. There's a lot of learning to do there and it's hard to do a complete walkthrough.